Welcome back to my multi-part guide on how to make your game dev life easier by using the right C-sharp data structures in Unity. You're watching part two. So in this video, we'll take a look at a data structure called hash set or just set in some other programming languages. And we'll check out some concrete examples specific to game dev. So a hash set is quite a bit more specialized than a list or an array, which we covered in the first video. And it has some really useful properties that you can use to your advantage. One of the most important ones being that it doesn't allow any duplicate elements. Before we get more into the properties of hash sets, let's see how we can define one that can hold simple integers. As you can see, this works exactly like defining a list. We just use the hash set class instead. A more realistic example could be a hash set that keeps track of the armor a character has equipped. To represent the equipment slots, you could just use strings, but a more robust representation is an enum, which looks like this. So just like a list, a hash set is a collection of elements of the same type. But like I mentioned, it only contains unique elements. If an element is already present in a hash set and you try to add it again, nothing will happen. And that might just be exactly what you need in some cases. Here we have a set of armor that a character has equipped and we've now equipped a leather jacket by default. In this case, we really wouldn't want to equip two leather jackets if the player clicks the equip button twice, which could happen if we used a list and may lead to all kinds of issues. Maybe we would incorrectly stack the leather jacket's protection score or we would only remove one leather jacket, leaving another one when the player tries to take it off. Of course, you can always use a list and check if it already contains an item, but that's more code to write and maintain for you. You may forget about it in some places as your game grows. And another underrated point in my opinion is that using a specialized data structure appropriately can make your intention clearer. Whoever reads your code, including you yourself one day later, will immediately know that the data container is supposed to hold unique values. Also, checking frequently for existing items in a sufficiently long list is not great performance wise. And we'll see in a moment why a hash set may be the better option. First, another example. Let's say your game has various regions or rooms. And as the player progresses, you need to keep track of which areas they've already visited. You could do that by using a hash set that holds the scenes or names or IDs of the discovered areas or something similar. That way, you can load up a tutorial hint or NPC when they first enter a new room, or you can display only the discovered areas on a map, or you could use the sets element count to calculate and display player progress. Anyway, another important feature of hash sets is related to performance. It may be interesting in some cases. When checking for an element in a list, it will just check every item until it finds the one you're looking for. So that can become an issue if your list is very long or if you're checking for elements very often or both, of course. A hash set, on the other hand, provides constant time lookups, which is a fancy way of saying that you can just check for any item in the same short amount of time, no matter how many items the set contains. This is possible because the internal memory location of any element in the set is computed by hashing the element itself. Looking at the contains method, this looks a bit complicated, but what it mostly boils down to is that the hash set can take the element we're looking for, run that element through its internal hash function, which will output where in memory to look for that element. If the element is not present and you later decide to add it to the set, it will be stored at exactly that location as well. The next convenient feature the hash set provides is that you can easily perform so-called set operations on multiple hash sets. Two very common ones are the intersection and the union. If you take two sets and you want a new set that contains only the elements that are in both original sets, you can take their intersection. And if you'd like a new set that contains all the elements from both sets, you can take their union. Remember that a set always contains unique elements. So even if the same element is in both original sets, the new set will not contain any duplicates. Let's think of a last example use case for sets where this functionality could be useful. Imagine a top-down strategy game with buildings you can place and units that move around. Each building and unit will have an attack range and in most games will attack automatically. As units move around, the set of things that each individual unit or building can attack will change frequently. So you could use a hash set to keep track of them. Going from there, you could use the intersection operation to figure out which units are in range for multiple attacking buildings so that they can all prioritize those. 
So in practice, you would probably keep track of which buildings are neighbors, meaning they're close to each other, and then you could perform the intersection operation on the in-range hash sets kept by neighboring buildings. Importantly though, a normal hash set does not keep your elements in a specific order like a list will do. So keep that in mind when evaluating if a set will work for your use case. That said, you can iterate overall contained elements, for example, using a for each loop. That way you can visit each element in the set and use it or perform some operation on it, but you will visit them in an order that you cannot control and that may change as you add or remove elements. And finally, there is one more minor drawback. While the Unity Inspector supports lists out of the box, letting you change the size and assign elements, it does not support hash sets. So if you rely on that, you may need to build a custom inspector or find a package that provides this functionality. That's it for hash sets. Let me know in the comments if you can think of a use case in your own game after watching this or if you have any questions. The next video in the series will cover dictionaries, which work in a very similar way and are also sometimes called hash maps. So you can probably guess where this is going. They have lots of practical use cases, probably even more than hash sets, so check the description below for a link to the next video. Thanks for watching.